to make sure you get a full dose of what is happening in the polity. Now, the politics of tenure elongation often sees leaders deploy political strategies and tactics to remain in power beyond their constitutional or electoral term limits. This can include changes in the constitution, manipulation of the electoral process, or other forms of legal or illegal action. For the opt-in time, former President Olusegun Obasanjo has insisted that he was not interested in the tenure and negotiation. Even he was audacious enough to secure a third time if he had wanted it before exiting power in 20, 2007. He stated this while speaking at a virtual meeting organized by African Leadership Group. He also said he would not join the, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, saying he has done his best by writing his endorsement, having retired from partisan politics. Let's start with this third time thing. It was glaring, it was obvious, a lot of people saw it, and there were, people were under pressure, and the National Assembly were like, you know, bright, you know, money was made available to the National Assembly, yet, and even a minister that served under him, Nasser Rarify, documented it in his accidental public, uh, uh, you public know, servant. servant, documented it that just he wanted it, and it, uh, said the role everybody played there. But still, Orusha Gobasa, years after, he still said that, no, I wasn't part of this, I never wanted it. I think the only Nigerian was no uh, tenor allegation to be Olusha. I don't think he believes himself, really. Maybe it's probably just grandstanding. Mm -hmm. You know, only last, last Sunday, I was saying that our passenger should not be condemned for endorsing Peter Obi. But on tenure elongation, nobody believes our passenger. Our passenger was, look at what he even said, say, I, was, I, I was audacious enough. For me, it, it, it shows a fundamental problem. For him to be talking like this, it's, still, it's, it's a symptom of a disease we have in our country, where Men are bigger than institutions. Mm. Where men are bigger than institutions. Onushe Goba Sojo was a man, was a larger than life president. He was a man who could cause orchestrate the removal of a sitting governor with just few legislators. Six. Yes. He was a man who removed a state governor under the guise of state of emergency. Joshua Dari. Yes. This was a man who was... He, he, he knew economics more than the economists. He knew religion more than the pastors. He knew, he, he, this was a man who thought he was everything, was all in all. He was a, he, this was a man who was bigger with his actions. His, his, his administration flagrantly disobeyed court orders. This, this same Obasanjo just stabbed a state, legal state of France, because he had problems with the state governor. This kind of man should not be talking like this. By now, I'm sorry, he's an elder, but should bury his head in shame for talking this way. He had plans for third term, and it was frustrated. He shouldn't be talking this way. In fact, this is one of the this is one of the uh, the, 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 the the things. This is one of the things that has made him to be infamous. That is, he's infamous in this area, and he will go down in history as a man who tried to elongate himself in power. I couldn't do it. If not with, with the constitution, although we blame them that why would you now, why would sure, they throw out the entire constitution it. because of of, um, of the just the third time uh, this, uh, this thing. But obviously shouldn't be talking like this. We know that he, he planned to do it. Yes, he, nobody, I, I still insist that if he wants to endorse, if he uh, endorse it, it will be it's not a problem. But he should not be posturing as a, as, as, as a puritan that he's not. He's not a puritan. He's a pseudo puritan. So, if Obasanjo wants to endorse anybody, if he doesn't want to participate in politics, it's okay. But we know what he tried to do. And this is, this is a country, there are, many of, there are still some little, little Obasanjo's in our polity, you know, who, has, who try to determine the fate of a group, maybe a political party, maybe an institution, because of their own selfish interest. Emeka, hmm. Obasanjo denying years after? Well, it, I, I was shocked when he said, uh, when I heard that part about <clears throat> that he was, he was auditious enough and he could have secured a third term. I, I feel at his age, you know, as people grow older, much older, 
you know, having crossed the, that mark of 70, which is uh, the famed biblical, you know, ceiling for life, that you know, anybody beyond that, well, to thank God you're living on Jara time. I think we should begin to, people in that bracket should begin to come to terms with things they have done rightly or wrongly, especially the things they have done wrongly, and then be thinking of their legacies. Exactly. So that it will be easier for them to be remembered, mm. you know, to be judged fairly. Mm. Definitely, Obama Joe had, he had very, he had laudable ideas. And this is GSM, Petros. But he allowed, he allowed that, he, he allowed that, uh, what will I call it? He allowed that loss for power to overshadow all the good things he did. And he shouldn't even be talking about third term now. Because this was someone who got our creditors to cancel, you know, but yes, our debts. Just forgiveness. So I think even when the question came up, he should have found a way to run around it. Because obviously, like you said, that in throwing out that third term, it also made Nigeria lose benefits that were in the constitutional review. Mm, exactly. So the nation lost a lot. It was just the same thing like June 12. Up to today, General Ibrahim Babangida has not come out to apologize for the annulment of June 12. He just keeps telling you, hey, well, uh, I did it in concert with this. I did it because this. Sir, with due respect, can you just come out? It won't take you anything. Nigerians, I'm sorry. You just had a flight of fancy at that time and did it, or whatever. I think you have got to a certain age. You can proudly, you can, you know, probably, even if people around you are shouting, you can just come out for the sake of your legacy and your name and the name you're going to leave for your children and say, listen, I'm sorry about what happened at so and so time. Well, maybe I was right, maybe I was wrong. I don't want to go into all of those things, but. Well, it didn't serve the interest of the nation. Thank you very much. And you close the chapter. But to now say you were audacious enough, you couldn't have. Well, that could have taken the nation also in, into you know, the kind of crisis, avoidable crisis we had after mm -hmm. the annulment of June 12. And have we requested for the annulment of June 12? The answer is no. We have not. You can vote our party today. It's part of it that, uh, after all, if we come out, to vote, our votes will not come. Now, people will tell you, people who are old enough to have voted in June 12th, they say, look at what happened in June 12th, uh, uh, during the June 12th election. So, I think, not just Obasanjo, Babangida, some of these elderly men who played crucial role, critical roles mm. in Nigeria's history should please come out. Too. Come out and come out with the truth. And let there be a clean state. Yes, I, I, I applaud him for having the courage to endorse Peter Obi. Yes, it's, I mean, let others endorse Everybody other will. candidates as they deem fit, whichever candidates as they deem fit. But that issue of third term, please. We are journalists. We saw a lot of things that happened. We saw how money moved. <laughs> Critical, principal actors. A senator from the Southeast, was he not the one that was said to have distributed the largesse through a defunct bank, uh, through the branch, a branch somewhere in Abuja? Or do they want us to start calling names? They were reported at that time. <laughs> you see, we don't need to go back into all these things. It's part of the painful history of mm. Nigeria. Mm. Please, let just let it just Please. allow it to slide. He should just let it. Jude, what do you make of this denial by Olusha Gombasojo? On behalf of the former president, I am ashamed <laughs> because. Obasanjo cannot rewrite history. He cannot give us his own version of history. We will not accept. We remember everything that happened. We are not too young. We, we, we were reporting everything that happened. And for Obasanjo to say that if he wanted to proceed, was his contempt for the Nigerian people. He shows that he even saw himself as bigger than the Nigerian nation. Because the Nigerian nation was not interested in third term. And you cannot say that you are bigger than your country, that if you wanted it, you, you will have had it. 
you that you couldn't get members of your party to support you for second term, you have to go and prostrate for a man much younger than you. You prostrated, you held the man's leg just to get a second term. You didn't even have control of governance. So how could you have control of the entire uh, federal legislature? Nigerian journalists are the true heroes of the failure of third term. Yes. And I will explain why. Senate President Ken Onamani called a meeting of senior editors at a co-hotel. I was privileged to be in attendance. And he told us, look, this third term problem has come. What do you want me to do? Advise me. Clearly, Ken Onamani wanted to talk at that time because he granted the news magazine an interview in which he said clearly that there was nothing wrong in tenure elongation, that some of the Asian Tigers had benefited from it. So when he came to us asking us what, we sh what uh, he should do, journalists, senior journalists, Eniola Bello, and the rest of them, mm. they got up one after another to tell him, look, the Nigerian people do not want to, from my interaction with Nigerians, they do not want to tap. We then advised him that if some lawmakers would insist on third term, permit the TV stations to record proceedings live, so that their own people can see them asking for third term. But the proceedings were broadcast live. After the first day, one of the senators from the Northwest who asked for third term, who claimed that his people wanted third term, his house was set ablaze in the Northwest. After that first day, A lot of the people who were not publicly, they could not dare push that agenda on the floor of the Senate because of the fear of the burning of their houses and other repercussions that will come with it. That was how third term was defeated. I'm happy I was there. We advised Ken Amani on what to do. We were the ones who told him to let the tape be broadcast live. Let us see whether these people will have the courage to say that their people wanted to talk. And the people, they didn't have the courage. We knew that it would end that way. We were the ones who suggested this to him. And I'm, I know that a lot of the senior editors who are in that meeting, they are watching me, and they can corroborate this. So this was how it happened. I have, I have evidence of that. But after meeting editors, he thought we would rubber stamp to talk, and we told him, no, don't do it. And the way to ensure that it will not work is for you to let this thing be watched live by Nigerians. And true to our prediction, those, those senators backed out. Only very few senators, even after collecting money, who want to put their lives at risk by getting up in the Senate when being watched by millions of Nigerians and say they wanted Obasanjo to continue. Now, Erufai was the first person, because they've always denied. Erufai was the first person who worked for Obasanjo who came out to say, yes, indeed, there was a plan for third term. After Obasanjo endorsed Peter Obi, Sule Lamido got so sufficiently angry. Sule Lamido is one of the most loyal persons that I know to Obasanjo. Mm. Because Obasanjo made him Minister of Foreign Affairs, Obasanjo also um, ensured that he became governor in the state. He worked hard for him to even be picked. Sui Lamido accused Obasanjo last week of plotting for third term. That was a new one for me. Because I've never seen where I criticized Obasanjo in my life. He said, Obasanjo is talking about fairness. Is third term fair? Was it not after third term? So, apart from uh, from uh, uh, 
the little man in Kaduna, we have seen the tall man from Jigawa also saying that Obasanjo wanted to talk. So how many people is he going to like? I don't want to meet your maker. There are certain things that you can't be saying. You can't be lying publicly. You can't. Well, you don't need these lies. You don't need it. Everyone knows that you wanted to time and you failed. You cannot be saying that if you wanted it, you will have succeeded. If you wanted it and the rest of us don't want it, how will you get there? Are you a military president? Mm. So this is the thing. I think the debate is settled. Obasanjo wanted to time and he didn't get it. A man may, will not always have whatever he wants. At times we see a beautiful woman, you want, you like the woman, but she's somebody else's wife. And you respect yourself, you, you, you just back off. So a man cannot always uh, have what he desires. That is a fact of life. Mm. He wanted to turn, but he couldn't get it because Nigerians didn't want it. Even Atiku at that time was the head of those who were mobilizing to ensure that Obasanjo didn't get to turn. There was an interview that we had with him. My my boss, Ojudu, Reverend Ojudu, was with me. And Atiku told us that he mobilized other people, spent money to ensure that the third time failed. And yet, uh, a man would still be lying that he did not want third time. Abba, I would just stop lying to us now. Abba. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is... Uh, uh, President, uh, former President Robinson should just allow this. To rest. The more you try to deny it, the more you try to <laughs> recall out. The, the money raised by Ndi Okereka and Yuki and Co. and the yes, rest of yes, them. Yes, yes. He just wants to drag. Nigerians. He wants to drag can, many, can eminent, can many eminent Nigerians. He just wants to drag <laughs> them exactly. into the gutter. It is, it is enough for him to say he supports Peter Obi. Mm. Let him leave this thought. It's already part of his history. People mm. will always come back to blame him for hate. He mentioned yeah, the yeah. GSM so resolution of that. So many, so many things, things, things he did well. People will talk about that. Yeah. We just don't allow this uh, part. <laughs> 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 I'm finally on the show.